In today's video, I want to chat to you guys about Topaz Denoise and Topaz Sharpen. These are two plugins that I started using towards the end of last year, and I played around with a bit. I was pretty impressed, but yesterday I put some of my new macro images into here. I ran Topaz Denoise first and then Sharpen, and my mind was blown. So this is not an in-depth tutorial. This is just to answer quite a few of you who asked, how does it work and what is it? Now, these are two plugins that you can buy separately. They plug into Lightroom and Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you the Photoshop version. I'm just more comfortable with those kind of plugins here. But in Lightroom, you can go, once you have it installed, right click, edit in, and then select one of those two. You can also run these independently or separate from uh, uh, Photoshop or Lightroom as a standalone program. Now, I'm gonna just run a quick image through. Let me take you into Photoshop. I've got an old lion image here both an old image and an old lion. And then I've got two of my raw files from yesterday's macro shoot that I did. Here's the other one. So I'm gonna run these through these programs, but before I go, I'm just gonna show you a straight up sharpen on this. This is a JPEG. It's an old image from many, many moons ago in Medikwe. So if we zoom in, I mean, it's not the sharpest, right? So inside Photoshop, you're gonna go filter. Once you have them installed, Topaz, and there's the two here. So for this image, I'm just gonna use Sharpen, so you can have a look at that. Now what it does is it launches Sharpen AI separately, you work in it, and then it spits it back into Photoshop. All right, now, just a quick overview here, before on the left, after on the right, what you'll see is you get different views. It's very similar to Nick Filters, and then we can zoom in. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Now I want you to notice a couple of things. The only drawback for me so far See this bar down here? What that gives to soft normal, this is the type of sharpening model that I choose, okay? But every time that I move or zoom, it recalculates. So depending on the size of your image, it can take a bit of time, but the end result is worth it. So I'm gonna just zoom back to 100% here, and then let's go with motion blur to fix. Now, the cool thing here is if you keep on trying different versions, if you look at the bottom, the blue bar is running, click. Now, even at this level, you should be able to see the difference. Let me take you in. So again, I've zoomed in, now it's gonna recalculate. Boom, there you go. And this is the before on the left and the after on the right. It is actually pretty ridiculous how the sharpening works. Now, the cool thing here is inside of, we're now inside sharpen, you can also suppress noise. And in denoise, you can also sharpen. So often it's worth trying an image both ways if you're not sure which way you wanna go. But let's just look at the details here underneath the chin compared to their huge difference, right? You can try all of these, out of focus, soft, uh, very blurry, try that, see what it does. It should be quite aggressive. Boom, there it is. And I can then either pull back on the blur, which is the sharpness, I can do less noise reduction. But this, as a result, is pretty cool. Now, I hit apply at the bottom, it's saving the image, and then when I open Photoshop here, it's this version I'm looking at now is my new sharpened version. Okay, now the only drawback that I have here is I would very much like this program to also, like Nick Filters does, when I apply the adjustment for it to create a new layer over here. All right, so for the next two images, I'm gonna do that. I am going to close this image, we don't have to save that. And now let's look at these two. All right, so both of these plugins work very much the same, but we're gonna start with this one here. So if I zoom in, this is, oops, wasn't supposed to do that. There is the raw file, untouched, no Lightroom, no anything on this. We're gonna clean this up so you can see there's a bit of noise, gray noise on the outsides. So I'm gonna go filter, actually stop what I just said. I'm gonna go right click first, duplicate the layer, and then I'm going to adjust this one. Topaz, what is this, D noise, because again, like with Nick, I can overdo the adjustment and then blend it back in if I need to. All right, so that's selected. I'm gonna go filter, topaz, and denoise. Same thing, it invokes, <laughs> sounds quite evil, it invokes the plugin. But here we go, denoise AI. So same work interface, everything, updating. So this is the general adjustment that it just did based on whatever it has. There is this over here, the model preference, where it auto selects what it believes is the correct uh, amount of denoising for this image. Let's go in. Now, I want you to watch, when I click on 200%, it'll zoom in, 
And at the bottom here, this will start again, processing that new preview. Watch this and go. Okay, can you see the denoise at work? This is absolutely quite ridiculous. The, the background is smooth, it's buttery, silky smooth. I still have all of my detail here, but even now I can pump this up and I can enhance the sharpness, right? So remove noise and sharpness. Like I said, sharpening has, the Sharpen AI has noise removal as well and denoise also has sharpening. So this is quite amazing. Let's run that as is, so I'm gonna apply. Now, at the top here, it says, it shows you how long it's going, processing, almost soon, it says. And it then spits out, soon, my final image back into Lightroom. So now, like I said, I've applied this to the top layer. So there's without, there's with. Oh, let me just change my feature here. And do, uh, I had spot removal on, there we go. So before, without, and after, before, and after okay so now I just move that thing a bit let me put this back see this is if Jerry doesn't prepare well and he moves stuff around here we go okay let's do him back in back to the action there so that was the raw file this is the denoised file okay now just for the purposes of now I'm gonna duplicate this layer again and we're gonna call this one um, topaz sharpen and I'm do that and now with the denoise already run I'm now going to run topaz sharpen AI and again now it's taking this version that's already been denoised into sharpen AI let's see what it does with it okay so you can see there's the before which is now the denoised version and now the same thing applies here let's go into more detail Let's go to 200%, lift this up, and see what it does with it. There you go. Now, I'm going to start from the top. Let's, let's put model parameters on. That's like an auto function, and it judges the image, and it gives us that. Now, you should be able to see, even on this preview, that the edges here are way sharpener. The de sharpener, or sharper. The details that the flower comes through, all of this little hair comes through. Let's apply that and see here we go so because it's such an awesome image it's taking quite a while to process let's see what it does and then we're going to compare the three versions so now what you'll have is remember layers works bottom one denoise and sharpen so if i take both of these off right that was the original this was the denoise version and that is the sharpen version in reverse sharpen denoise sharpen denoise and the original it is ridiculously effective now obviously i'm not going to present my image at this level mm, goodness where is it there i'm not going to present it there so i would normally sharpen and then go back so if i look at that before and after denoise and sharpen it is absolutely magnificent right let's close this one and do all that again on the other image this one here so there we go that is what i'm looking at same exercise i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to call that topaz denoise or something similar and i'm going to go filter topaz and denoise okay let's see what we can do with this one again i'm going to zoom in quite tight for you guys so you can see the results up close that should be close enough watch the bottom here working and boom even there you should be able to see the difference but let me go in 200 percent let's go there and watch the bottom running and done watch that background silky smooth and we maintaining integrity on the sharp areas it is absolutely amazing let's try the model preference which is the auto version where it calculates iso and all of that yeah not bad but i want some more sharpness on that okay let's hold it there so that will be my first denoise. Watch the background. Yes, and then once this thing is processed, I'm gonna create a new layer and I am going to run the sharpening AI on it. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate. Remember, I have to duplicate this one. The bottom one is the original. This is the denoised version. So I duplicate the one which I wanna work on further. Say, so, okay, I'm gonna to go topaz sharpen. There we go, topaz and sharpen. 
So I'm going to, again, let's go to 200% so we can see the details at work. And there we are. I'm going to go into 200% first. There we go. And it's on the model parameter, so it's deciding for itself. There we go. You see the detail. Like again, guys, I'm not going to present it at this level. This was a wider shot. So <laughs> a wider shot, but it's macro, but you get what I mean. But the details here is unbelievable. I'm going to save that as, and then we can go and crop this into what we would present it as and see what the difference is. It's thinking. All right, so let us crop in here. So what I would probably do here is from a crop point of view of how I would present it, probably something because the energy is going now let's do composition while we're at it right the energy from this frame is coming from top left to bottom right this this leaf is pointing through the frame so I would probably be tempted to do something like that all right now if I go in to there so let's go that was the original notice the noise notice the lack of sharpness this is with denoise and that is with sharpness and that is pretty impressive so that's a very 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 basic look at these two plugins I've played with it quite a bit I am planning some deeper tutorials in the next few weeks the one very cool feature that I did early today is I exported 10 images for my um, for my Instagram feed from Iceland iPhone pictures I ran them through Lightroom very quickly exported the 10 of them onto the desktop and then I opened sharpen AI I selected all the images and you say auto all I think is what it says just select all and then go and what it does it uses the auto the the model selector and it chooses the best sharpening for every image and it runs as a bulk and it doesn't get sharpened by one preset it gets sharpened based on what's best for that image guys I can highly recommend these two they are slightly on the expensive side when it comes to filters I think last time I checked it was $89 each but if you take it seriously and you want to get the best out of your images, especially for print or, or, or what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, macro, things like that. Phenomenal. Let me take it in. Let's end on this. I'm going to bring it in here one more time. That, let's check it out. That before, denoise, sharpen. It. It's phenomenal. If you have any questions, give me a shout. I'm loving these filters and it's worth every single cent. My name is Jerry, I'm from Wild Eye. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.